Hello, let's look at part 28 of the real certification questions for AWS Cloud Practitioner. By the way, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do that. There are tons of videos and playlists which are totally dedicated, free of cost, on cloud certifications. There are videos on Azure, AWS, GCP, Salesforce. So what are you waiting for? Please hit the subscribe button. And if you like my videos, do hit a like. It helps me understand what the pulse of the audience. In this part, we will look at questions linked with these three topics, guard duty, IAM, user management, and artifacts. For questions 1 to 165, do refer parts 1 to 27 of this playlist. Now, this is a question, okay? We, this is a real question, but I think there is a flaw in this. Uh, so, the question is saying we need to recommend an approach or a couple of approaches, which is not recommended it's not okay so if i what i would do is in this question i would go through each and every option and i would tell you like which ones are not recommended and which ones are recommended and you would find that there are more than two which are not recommended okay so that's why i am just giving you an alert a spoiler so that you know that now let us scan through the option the first one says requires IAM users to change their passwords after a specified period of time. So this is the best practice, okay? Any application, for example, your banking application, example, Bank of America. So if you have an account with this bank or any other bank like Barclays and so on, you would see that there is a request which comes like after specific intervals to kind of refresh your passwords that ensures that your password if it is compromised so it, it does not stay compromised for a longer period of time so what does that tell you this is a best practice this is our recommended approach now let's look at the second one now prevent iam users from reusing previous passwords so if you try to reset your passwords, you would find that it does not allow you to reuse the previous passwords. That is a best practice. Why? Imagine like two occurrences before you had used a password which got compromised and now you reuse that and if it is allowed, so again you get compromised. Suppose somebody used your passwords and took ten thousand dollars from your account now they would be able to do that again now right because you are reusing your passwords that's why banking applications and other key applications they do not allow you to reuse your passwords so this is good right this is a recommended approach now let's look at option c so c is like gross it says you use the same passwords on AWS and other sites. For example, you have a password like Jack12345, then you can use that in your Google account, um, in your banking accounts like Bank of America. And you can use that for various other applications. Why? So that, because you, if you do that, uh, you would be a foolish guy, right? Because anybody who hacks your aws passwords or credentials they can right away go to all these applications all the bank accounts where you have relationships with and they can hack the entire system obviously bank accounts do have mfas like multi-factor authentication a lot of them do have but at least the initial password if it is hacked still uh, the hackers can get around mfas okay so C is wrong, don't do that. Don't use the same passwords across different applications. Now you have an option D where it says that you would store the password in raw text, okay? It's just like you would put your confidential bank account details and on a notice board in your apartment complex so that everybody can view it. Would you do that? No, man, you cannot do that, right? 
So putting your passwords in raw text file without masking them is as bad as that. Now let us look at E. So E talks about disabling MFAs. So you know MFAs, it is one of the best things you can do to secure your systems. It is multi-factor authentication. So even if your password gets compromised, the MFAs, the secondary or multiple mode of authentication will still do not, not allow the hacker to get in. So if you are disabling this, you are actually uh, putting a bullet on your leg. So the green ones, these are the, the recommended approach approaches, like two of them. And the red ones are not recommended. That's why I told you cannot select two answers. If you are looking for not recommended, there has to be three answers to this. Well, let us jump into this one. So you are looking to identify harmful or illegal activities on your accounts. So which of these options would you use? Let's scan one by one. You got recognition. So recognition is used for image and video analysis. Suppose you have your CCTV footage and you want to understand uh, between like one and one five, how many people were around that street. You want to do some analysis or how many people were there in the stadium at that during the mass time, you can do that analysis. So this is totally different, man. It will not help you with identifying harmful or illegal activities. Now let's look at B, trusted advisor. So trusted advisor, it helps in reduction of costs, improves performance, improved, improves security posture, but it is not going to tell you, hey, a thief is entering your apartment complex. It will not tell you that. It is a consultant who will tell you, hey, you know what? You should install uh, security alarms. It will give you that advice, but it will not uh disapprove the thief from getting in i hope you got this one right now cloud watch let, let us look at cloud watch now cloud watch is just like your cctv camera it will record whatever is there man it will record but it is not going to tell you this guy is a thief it will just tell you that oh this many people came in it will record the footage and so on so then what's the use? It, it, it is uh, reactive. A theft happens and you want to now see hey, who was the person coming in that time. It is reactive. It is not proactive. You are looking for a proactive solution, which leaves us with guard duty. So guard duties have intelligent threat detection. They are your security guards, man. They immediately looking at the people, the way they are behaving. They might take a call. Okay, I find something suspicious. This guy should not be here. At this point in time so that is guard duty my friend this is the answer this is the person which has intelligence to understand this is a harmful or a illegal activity what's the use of you know installing systems when you cannot catch the thief so guard duty is very useful it catches the thief it is not it is a proactive solution it will catch the thief it is not going to do a post-mortem after the theft happens. So this is my final answer. Now this question, it is asking that you want a security and a compliance information on demand. Which service would help you with that? So let us scan the, through the options. Cloud Trail, it would help you with operational and risk auditing, governance and compliance of your AWS account. Okay, so let us park CloudTrail for now. Let us look at other options. If we get better options for this, let us look at Artifact. So this is Artifact. It is a service which enables you to download security and compliance documents. Then this is what we need, man. We need to understand if this environment is ISO certified, SOC certified, and so on. So this is what the question specifically is asking for. So it is like if you have a payment system, or an application which is linked with payment system is it pci compliant you know you have to be like your razor app and so on it has to be pci compliant and SOX compliant and so on or hipaa compliant so i got a better answer than a so i would mark this correct and i would mark this wrong okay 
now let us look at health what is health so it gives you the health of current and historical health for all the aws services that you are leveraging okay it gives you some sort of a report it's just like your latest medical report where you get uh like whether your blood tests are okay your blood pressure your sugar levels are defined and so on so this is not going to give you compliance information because uh, if you see uh, hospitals or labs which conduct medical tests for example ranbaxy or srl labs so you want to know whether they are certified they are iso certified or they are having some sort of medical certifications that is your ask your ask is not about your own medical reports got it and cloud watch as we know that cloud watch is going to watch the activities who is entering in the apartment complex who is going out it is not going to tell you whether the apartment complex itself is certified to the municipal corporation norms or not so this is wrong as well so this is my final answer please hit the subscribe and the like button this brings us to the end of part 28 we looked at questions linked with these three topics i hope it was useful see you back in the next part